है सत्यम ज्ञान अनंतम ब्रह्म वन ऑफ द मोस्ट सोरिंग सबलाइम सेंटेंसेज इन द उपनिषद दिस इज फ्रॉम द तैतीय उपनिषद द सेकेंड चैप्टर ब्रह्मानंद वर्ली वॉट इज ब्रह्मन इन्फिनिट बींग इन्फिनिट अवेयरनेस इज ब्रह्मन इट इज एक्चुअली सो इमीडिएट this very existence you feel it you are immersed in this ocean of divinity this very existence you feel existence right now i am and all this is this isness without limit is brahman when we limit it limited beings limited existences but without limit you see it as an ocean of existence everywhere and that existence alone it's there in every existing thing in this universe from quarks to quasars Uh, from amoeba to blue whales everywhere and you go further it is not just existence imagine like in a dream where everything is actually in you in you the dreaming mind similarly everything that is that is there is in you the awareness in chit or gyanam as we say in gyanam and you go even further everything is not that one existence awareness alone is as vivekananda said all is one and the one is bliss the waking state it gives us a clue the dream state it gives us a clue and the deep sleep state it gives us a clue the waking state gives us a clue uh, in in terms of existence satyam it all feels so real here this reality not the things which are real but the reality which you feel that is brahman the waking state gives us a clue the dream state gives us a clue how everything can be in awareness in the mind a whole worlds worlds of dreams and things can happen experiences but it's all in the mind similarly that's an example similarly here right now it's all in awareness and the deep sleep state gives us a clue how there can be nothing at all except being awareness where there is no two anymore and that's true even now there is only one though appearing as many and when that one appears in many as experiences itself like this that is bliss if we do not say the see the one and then we see ourselves as many experiencing each other then that samsara you see the one and then that appears as all this and that is bliss that's also sri ramakrishna is to call it vigyana this limitless being limitless awareness we just the refrain which we sang um satyam brahma gyanam brahma anantam brahma the limitless existence limitless awareness this we are uh, we shall see today that uh, the li- our limitlessness is what we do not realize even after that that inquiry i am not the body not the mind then i we end up feeling yes i am awareness some kind of spark of awareness little bit of awareness in a vast uncaring world there is a vast separate world apart from me and i'm like maybe what he is telling me is i am a flickering flicker of awareness in this so this is called tvam padarthasya abrahmatvam that tvam you but you are not the vast you are a tiny spark that sense of being a limited little thing even if i am consciousness only that will go away when it is combined with tat we'll see that and tat that power which has created this vast universe the problem with that is that seems that is paroksha it seems distant theoretical taken on faith at least not immediately experienced that non immediacy parokshatvam the non immediacy of brahman that will go away when it is combined with tvam because you are immediate to yourself but you feel limited brahman is unlimited but it feels distant when you combine them you get the feeling of an immediate infinity immediate means right here now direct immediately available infinity and you know that you are that 
It's an incredible thing. And the beauty of it, it is continuously, effortlessly available to you forever after that. That is moksha, that is nirvana, that is freedom, here and hereafter. All right, now let's get back to the text. Mm, it is easy. She says you make everything sound very easy. <laughs> well, it is. It is easy. The invocation. Sargasthiti pralaya heto machintya shaktim. Sargasthiti pralaya heto machintya shaktim. Vishweshwaram vidita vishwamananta murtim. Vishweshwaram vidita vishwamananta murtim. Nirmukta bandhanam apara sukham burashim. Nirmukta bandhanam apara sukham burashim. Shri vallabham vimalabodhaghanam namami. Shri vallabham vimalabodhaghanam namami. Yasya prasada tahameva vishnu. Yasya prasada tahameva vishnu. Mayeva sarvam parikalpitam cha. Mayeva sarvam parikalpitam cha. Itham vijanami sadatma rupam. Itham vijanami sadatma rupam. Tasyangri padmam pranatos minityam. Tasyangri padmam pranatos minityam. Along with Shankaracharya saluting his Guru, Govinda Pada, we salute our own Guru because that it's the lineage which goes back to Shankaracharya, to Govinda Pada, Gauda Pada, and back to Ishwara, Bhagavan, Narayana. Hmm. All right. Now, we are trying to understand the meaning of. Tattvam Asi. We are trying to extract the meaning of the sentence Tattvam Asi, that thou art. That is the meaning of the, the title of the book, Vakya Vritti. Since we don't have time to go through the rest of it, verse by verse, I will now, in, a, in the next few minutes, in a condensed way, summarize the entire procedure which is remaining to us. So listen carefully. I will. Um, I'll summarize it in, the, in a few sentences and I'll repeat it once for our benefit also. Then we will take up some of the verses. The verses also will become pretty easy then. So, um, what have we got? Tattvam Asi. Where does this come from? It comes from the Chandogya Upanishad. What does it express? It expresses the essence of Vedanta. If we realize this, we'll be free of all sufferings. We will realize who we are. But what does it mean? You are that. What is this you? Shweta Ketu's father is the guru in that Chandogya Upanishad, chapter 6, and he's telling his son Shweta Ketu, you are that, Tattvamasi. Yeah. The context is, Shweta Ketu had gone off to school, and then he comes back after becoming a pandit, and his father sees from a distance, this guy has, you know, he's been to an Ivy League school and all, he's become arrogant, and uh, he thinks this, his old man doesn't know anything at all, and is outdated. So his father wants to puncture, his deflate his ego and also give him the highest knowledge. So he asks, Shweta Ketu, did your teachers teach you that by knowing which everything is known? And Shweta Ketu, that throws him up off his, you know, a little bit. I have learned so many things, but at all, is it at all possible to know one thing and know everything? I have never heard of such a knowledge. And how is it possible that such a knowledge could exist? I mean, if you know biology, you know all living things. If you know chemistry, you know all, all chemi chemical things. If you know physics, you know the fundamental particles, um, you know the reality of this universe. And if you know grammar, you will understand Sanskrit. But what is that by knowing which you, everything is known? How is such a knowledge even possible? And he says, no, sir, they did not teach me this uh, at school. And uh, uh, Shankaracharya there, he comments humorously. And he says that, Shweta Ketu says, why don't you teach me? And Shankaracharya comments humorously there. He is afraid of being sent back to school again. <laughs> his, his father is like, oh, you didn't learn it. Back to school. What did you do, what did you do at school? 
So then his father teaches him, first of all he says, yes it is possible. Uh, if you know clay, you know all the pots that are made of clay. There's a lump of clay out of which pots are made, then whatever pots are made, whatever jars, pots, pitchers are made, you know that it is the same clay. You know what it is, it's clay. If you know what is gold, then you know all the ornaments that are made out of gold that can possibly be made out of gold. If you know what is iron, these are the examples he gives, several examples. If you know what's iron, then you know what is, you know all the implements, the tools which are made out of iron. He actually mentions nail cutters, so nakani krintena. All tools like nail cutters and all which are made, you know that it's the same iron. Meaning thereby, if you know the cause, you know the effect. What cause? The material cause. What is the material cause? That, that substance, that matter out of which something else is made. So this room is made of wood. So wood is the material cause of this structure. Um, the lake is made of water. So water is the material cause of that lake. So everything uh, has a material cause. All effects have causes. And one type of cause is the material cause. If you know the material cause, you know the effect. Now what is the material cause of this entire universe? If you want to know everything, you have to know the material cause of everything, the cause of everything. And then Shwetakitu's father goes on to say, Sadeva Samya Idam Agrasit. At the beginning, before this entire universe was, there was Sat. This one. The Tat means Tat Sat. Tattvamasi, that's the sentence. Tat means that. That what? That Sat that was there at the beginning of this universe. From that one existence alone has come all of this. In that case, just like from clay has come all the pots, from iron has come all the iron implements, from gold has come all the gold ornaments, just like that, from that one Sat has come everything in this universe. If you know that Sat, then you know everything. And note here, from Sat has come everything, then Sat must be Saguna Brahman, Ishwara, Bhagavan, who is the creator of everything, the God of religion. So the idea of God is the one who has created everything. So from God has everything come, if you know that, you will know everything. But how do you know that? How do you know that? Then his father drops the bombshell. He says, Tattvam Masi Shvetaketu. That Sat, you are that Sat. So immediately that reaction will come. But what do you mean? I am not the material cause of the universe. I am this, this, this guy. I just came back from school. <laughs> How can I be the material cause of the universe? How can I be the Sat? So you have to investigate yourself. Find out who you are. And what Sat actually is. And then you will find both of you are the same thing. Then if you, then it is true, if you know yourself, you know the entire universe. Not as a simple rhetorical point, uh, actuality, reality. If you investigate yourself, what you will find ultimately, that is the material cause of the universe. That is the reality which appears as this entire universe. Know yourself, know the entire universe. That is the knowledge. The knowledge of yourself is the knowledge which will give you knowledge of everything. However, one little qualification here. Knowledge of everything, does it mean that you become an encyclopedia? Is it equal to reading the Britannica encyclopedia, now you know everything? Elon Musk read it twice. That's what enabled him to take over Twitter. <laughs> so is it like that? Will you read the, like reading the encyclopedia? No, not in detail. Notice, even in the examples, when you know what clay is, you know whatever pots are made out of clay, you know that they are clay. In that sense, you know every pot. But you don't know the particular names, shapes, sizes, decorations which the potter might give. What Mahamaya may, might fashion out of this universe, you don't know it in detail. You don't know the sciences and the mathematics and the chemistry and biology, but you know it in reality that it is Satchidananda. Whatever it is, it's Brahman and I am that Brahman. That you know for clear and from direct, clearly, that from direct experience. But in details you don't know. Knowing everything in details, is it possible? Knowing everything, totality, in details. 
It is possible for Ishwara, for Bhagavan. It's not possible for a Jiva to know everything in totality. But for a Jiva, it's possible to know um, that I am Satchidananda. You can see it quite clearly here. How does a Jiva know? A Jiva knows things in the world, including the ice cream cone, through senses and a mind lit up by reflected consciousness. That's how we know things. Uh, we have to focus our senses, or we have to study a book, and then it comes to the mind, and in the mind consciousness reveals it, and I say, I know, I understand, I get it. That's it. Very limited. Yeah. You have to focus the beam of your attention from one side to another, look at this, taste that, think of that, analyze that, and get some knowledge. In this limited way, we keep knowing things. But how does Ishwara know? Through Maya, Ishwara has become, this, this Brahman, through Maya has become everything and knows it from the inside as I am all this and including all details. Why? Because all minds, including the totality of all minds, co cosmic mind, is also identified, Ishwara is identified with that. So through all of that, Ishwara knows and especially through Maya, becoming everything from the inside out. As we know ourselves, Ishwara knows everything and through being everything. So Ishwara knows that Ishwara is Brahman, Aham Brahmasmi, Ishwara knows this, but also knows everything in detail, not us. So this is the standard Advaita uh, explanation. There is some doubt about this though. And there are people who raise the question that after becoming enlightened, not just that you know you are Brahman, but um, maybe, you know, isn't it possible to know everything in detail? So it's a debate. In Advaita Vedanta, we don't say that. But first of all, it's not also backed up by experience. When you look, up, look at people who are enlightened, uh, whether it's Vivekananda, Sri Ramakrishna, uh, Masharada, Ramana Maharshi, and others, or enlightened beings, or saints and sages through the ages, do they sound like encyclopedias? Are they suddenly found of all kinds of science and art and history and politics? No. Not only that, when Vivekananda had to know something, he had to go and read the books and meet the experts, talk to them and learn that. Whether it's Sanskrit grammar or science. And, uh. So, uh, in detail, even a Jivan Mukta has to go through the processes. Anyway, this is just an um, ancillary topic. This is not related to our main topic. Uh, there are philosophies, there are schools of thought which say that not only you, that you know, the enlightened one knows everything in detail. So Jainism wants to say that. Um, then Jainism is one. Kashmiri Shaivism wants to say that you actually become one with Shiva and you gain omniscience. So there are schools. Anyway, that's not at all our topic for today. Our topic is Tattvam Asi. Now, here is the analysis, what's going to happen in the next few verses. I'm going to sum it up quickly. Attention, close listening now. <laughs> Tattvam Asi, that thou art. Here, that means Brahman, Saguna Brahman, Ishwara. How do you know? Because Chandogya Upanishad said, it is that, that reality from which the entire universe has come. And that's the very definition of God, Ishwara Saguna Brahman, the creator of this universe. So, Tat means Saguna Brahman. Tuam means Jiva, you. Um, right away, there is a problem. What is the problem? The problem is this. Tuam, you, means this person. Tat means God with Maya, creator of the entire universe. When you say, you are all of this, it's not true. Straight away, it's not true. It's like saying, you are everything. No. It's clearly not true. The individual, this I, and with body, mind, and God with all of this universe, they are not the same at all. Um, so, we need to analyze. That's why this analysis is. If it is straight, straightforward, you are, hey, Swami, you are Sarva Priyananda. Straight away, no need of Bhakya Vritti there extracting the meaning. Straight away, the meaning is straight, straightforward. But here, the straightforward meaning doesn't apply at all. So, um, the definition of Ishvara is Maya Upahita Chaitanya. Consciousness there, associated with Maya. And everything else that's a product of Maya. 
definition of jiva tvam is agyana upahita chaitanya same consciousness associated with one individual agyana one mind one body that limited being like each of us here goes the analysis now to solve the whole problem to extract the meaning um, the first step is the question will be raised wait a minute a sentence has many words you're saying vakya sentence tattvam hasi has many words tattvam asi we can ignore for the time being it's just equating but there are at least two words words have meanings if you're using multiple words then there will be multiple meanings swami is sitting on a chair and talking through a microphone swami sitting on chair talking through microphone there is a person there is an object the chair uh, there is the relationship of sitting on there is the action of talking there is the instrumentalization of the thing through or by and there is the instrument microphone so many words and they all have different meanings they don't express one non dual meaning but we want to say that tattva masi means one non dual reality one reality ultimate reality but you have multiple words here multiple words means multiple entities how can a sentence point to one reality now our answer is sometimes sentences do point to one reality multiple words point to the same thing in the western philosophy there is this sentence the morning star is the evening star venus is the evening star venus is also the morning star the two descriptions two kinds of descriptions but they both point to the same thing um another classic example is like vishnu sahasranama lalita sahasranama sahasranama thousand names thousand names of vishnu refer to what thousand things no one reality vishvam vishnu vashatkara bhuta bhavya bhavat prabhu all of these names but they are different words we are we are not repeating the same word so different words but they all refer to one thing it is possible so our point is they, you can have multiple words they can refer to one thing now how will you know what kind of sentence this is is it a sentence with multiple words referring to one thing or is it a sentence like swami is sitting on the chair talking through the microphone a sentence with many words referring to many things the clue is in sanskrit grammar vibhakti the case endings if the sentence has the all the words in the same case ending um case ending means like rama dandena gamanayati rama the boy rama dandena with a stick gam the cow to the cow it anayati drives it or brings it so there's a little boy who's going on bringing the cow home with a stick now these are dandena in sanskrit means by the stick it's instrumental third case ending tritiya vibhakti so there it shows that the words are used in different senses but notice something about the vishnu sahasranama vishwam vishnu uh, vashatkar uh, all of them are in first case if the first case prathama vibhakti all the sentence the words in the sentence are in the same case samana vibhakti then they are all referring to the same reality tapakaya ch dharmasya sarva dharma swarupine all fourth case who who are many words but who are we referring to one so look at this tat tvam asi tat and tvam both are in the first case therefore this is a clue tat and tvam are referring to the same reality so this is called technically samana adhikaranyam multiple words all having the same locus or the same referent so multiple words are referring to one thing you might say this is too much of going round and round it's why don't you just take it but you have to be careful when you're extracting the meaning you have to be careful every uh, every possibility has to be covered why because 
what we are I'm presenting to you is the product of more than a thousand, fourteen hundred, fifteen hundred years of debate. <laughs> At least a thousand years of debate. There are philosophers, schools of thought who will say, no, 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 Tat and Tuam refer to two different things. Can't you see your own diagram shows it, Swami? Tuam, you are that little fellow. Tat is that vast thing. Therefore, the little fellow is the servant of that Tat. Who will say this? Dvaita Vedanta will say. It is not a Samanadikaranyam sentence, they will say. Tasya Tvamasi. Tasya Dasa Tvamasi. You are the servant of that, that, that supreme being. So we say, no, that is not correct. It expresses an identity because it is a Samanadikaranyam sentence. A sentence with multiple words referring to one undivided reality. Done. Next, the opponent comes and says, mm hmm Okay, but let me give you an example. You can see there, uh, there is an orange flower. Can you see the orange flower? Orange flower? Now, or orange cloth, orange guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> orange flower. Now, orange flower, the opponent says, notice, orange and flower. It refers to the same thing. There's only one thing. This flower characterized by orange. Orange is a color, flower is a substance. Orange flower is this, this one thing. Two words, but they mean one thing. So, Tattvamasi could be like that. Brahman characterized by Jiva. There's one reality, vast reality Brahman, which has got these other characteristics. There are living beings, non-living beings. Look at your diagram, Swami. So they are it's Brahman characterized by Jiva. This is called an adjectival relationship. Adjective and noun. Two, two words refer to the same thing. Orange flower, orange cloth, or red flower, tall man, fast car. So why can't they, why can't it be like this? Who will say this? The Vishishta Dvaitin. Jiva Jagat Vishishta Brahma. And your diagram, Swami, thank you very much. They will say it, it perfectly illustrates what we want to talk about. Here is Brahman, one reality, and characterized by all these little beings called sentient beings and non living things like mountains and sun and all that. And this is Brahman, an organic unity of the whole. Why not? I'm giving you a nice interpretation. There, tat is the reality like the flower and tuam could be the color like the, uh, you know, like the color uh, orange. Tuam, the jiva, could be a characteristic of Brahman. Jiva jagat vishishta Brahman. Brahman qualified by sentient beings and insentient things like the physical universe. So this is the second attack. Now we have to say, no, this doesn't work. Why? Because there's a contradiction. The contradiction is that um, between flower and color, there is no contradiction. If I say orange flower, very good, no contradiction. White car, very good, or fast car, no contradiction. But if I say uh, flower car, you say what? <laughs> fast orange, what? They don't go together. There's a, there's a contradiction. And if you try to put Jiva and Ishwara together, there's a contradiction. Why, why, is, there, why is there a contradiction? Ishwara is all-knowing, Jiva is little-knowing. Ishwara is all-pervasive, uh, Jiva is less, less pervasion. Uh, Ishwara is all-powerful, Jiva has very little power. Uh, the all all knowing, all pervasive, little knowing, little pervasive, all powerful, little powerful Ishwara Jiva. What does that mean? <laughs> you can say the tall guy with orange cloth. You'll understand. But if you say tall short guy, what? <laughs> How can you say this one reality which is all powerful? and little powerful, all pervading and little pervading, all knowing and little knowing. How? How do the two go together? They won't fit. 
And anyway, what will that suffice? Or how will that help in getting liberation, freedom and all that? So that is a contradiction. It doesn't go together. So we reject that also. Now what do we do? We, have, we say that Tattvamasi means exactly what it says. You are that. You are, uh, you are not a servant of that. You are not a part of that. You are not an adjective of that. You are that. Well, they will say, they will say, uh, opponents will say, okay, smart guy, let's hear it. What is your case? How do you resolve the contradiction? So our answer is that since the direct meaning doesn't work, we have to take the implied meaning. Now you begin to see why we did all that work in the last three classes. The direct meaning doesn't work, we have to take the implied meaning. Um, Vachyartha has to be given up, Lakshyartha has to be taken. In Sanskrit, Vachyartha, direct meaning, dictionary meaning, uh, or it's also called Abhida meaning, the word meaning directly, doesn't work. And yet we insist that the sentence is meaningful, then you have to take an implied meaning. And that's what we do in day to day life also. I bought a mango, okay? I ate the mango. Everybody understands, when you say you bought a mango, you bought the whole fruit with the skin and the seed and all of that. When you say you ate the mango, everybody understands, you ate just the flesh of the mango and discarded the rest, the seed and the skin. This is called implied meaning because you use the word mango in two senses. The star lake is here. I fell into the star lake. Now, it has two meanings. You, when you say this is a star lake, you mean the whole lake. When you say I fell into it, you say I fell into a corner of it. You don't mean the whole lake anymore. So there is an implied meaning. Part and you are, you are taking a, a direct meaning, the whole lake, implied meaning, one part of it. So this implied meaning we have to take to make the words fit. What is this implied meaning? Uh, in Sanskrit, lakshartha. Now there are... Um, there are um, three kinds of implied meaning. Implied meaning you can take in three ways. Actually, there are many more kinds. This is, it may sound complicated, but this is actually highly uh, simplified. How you take implication. I saw, uh, you know, the dimensions of the original debate. There were 16 kinds of implication. And uh, you have to show why only that one you accept. Only one of the 16 is acceptable. You have to cut down all the other 15 before you accept that 16th one. So anyway, we don't go into all that. We take three kinds. There are three kinds. One is called Ajahad Lakshana. Another one is called Jahad Lakshana. And third one is called Jahad Ajahad Lakshana. Yeah. So, um, what does this mean? One, one option is to say that um, we will start with the uh, Jahad Lakshana. That, um, take the example of, the classic example they gave is Gangayam Ghoshaha. Gangayam Ghosha means the colony of the cowherds or the milkmen is in the Ganga. When you say that, you don't literally mean that there's a... I'm using this as a strange example because it's the classical example that's used. So, uh, you don't literally mean that the milkmen stay in the river called Ganga. You mean next to the river, uh, on the bank of the river. It's close to the river. Just like in England, when you go, they take you to Shakespeare's house. It's called Stratford-on-Avon. Stratford-on-Avon. Swami Vivekananda writes letters. In his letters, it's Belur on Ganges. <laughs> so, Belur Mat on Ganges does not mean that the monastery is in the river Ganga. It's on the bank of the river Ganga. So, when you say on Ganges, on Avon, uh, literally it means in the river. But that's of course... You can't have a monastery in the river. You can't have a Shakespeare's house in the river. And we take the implied meaning. We say that in the river means not in the river, but close to the river, on the bank of the river, 
on the bank of the same river. When you say ba Belur on Ganges, does not mean that Belur is on the bank of Yamuna or something. It's on the bank of Ganga. So you must, you have to take a, a nearby meaning, a meaning which is proximate. Give up the original meaning, take a proximate meaning. And we do that all the time. We do that all the time. Like this Belur on, on Ganga, for example. So can we give it up and take the proximate meaning in this case, it won't work. Why? What we want to say here is that Satchidananda, actually I am that Satchidananda and Brahman is that Satchidananda. I, the Vachyartha, the literal meaning is body, mind, causal body, Satchidananda. Satchidananda covered by causal body, subtle body and body. And what is Brahman is Satchidananda covered with Maya, all minds, all bodies, entire universe. Now, I can't give up the entire meaning of I and try to take some nearby meaning. Because I want to retain this meaning, Satchidananda. In Brahman's case also, I cannot give up Satchidananda and take some other meaning. I have to retain part of the meaning. I can't give up the whole meaning. When you say on the Ganga, you give up the entire meaning and take some nearby meaning that, that you are next to the Ganga. In this case, you can't do that because in the meaning of the word Tat, in the meaning of the word Tvam, Satchidananda is included, which is basically what we are trying to drive at. You can't sacrifice that. So we cannot take Jahad Lakshana. Jahad literally means giving up. Lakshana, implied meaning, which gives us the implied meaning, the way of giving us implied meaning. So the procedure of getting an implied meaning by giving up the original meaning and taking an implied meaning, that will not work for us. We let that go. What other options are available to us? A second way of getting an implied meaning is called Ajahad Lakshana. Ajahad Lakshana means don't give up the original meaning, modify it, get something else, add it, add to it, and then you will get the desired meaning. For example, the classic way the, the meaning they give, the classic example they give is Shona Dhavati, the brown is running. What do you mean brown is running? How can a color run? Color can run actually. In English what you mean is you put a color and then the rain falls and it starts running. <laughs> but not in that sense. Uh, brown is running. You say, oh, what you meant was the brown horse is running. So it's an example from the horse races. So and that means the Vedantins in those days would bet on horses. They, would, they were pre pretty sharp characters. They would go to the horse races. So this is an example from the horse races. Um, the brown horse is running. In order to make sense of the sentence, Shona Dhavati. Shona means red or brown. You have to add the word Ashwa, horse. Shona Ashwa Dhavati. Red horse is running or brown horse is running. Then it makes sense. Add something, keep the original thing and add something, it makes perfect sense. It takes a long time to say these things. We automatically do it in our life. Yeah. Whenever somebody speaks, we make sense of it by taking an implied meaning all the time. Can we do that here? Tat tvam asi. Can we retain tvam? I am as it is. And can I add something to make, make me infinite? Won't work. If I retain my limitedness, my limited knowledge, my limited um, body, mind, my limited strength and add to it the infinity of Ishwara, I'll become an infinite, finite Brahman, an all-knowing, little-knowing Brahman, all-powerful, little-powerful Brahman. It won't work. The problems, my problems, I'm a miserable little creature. I'm afraid of death, I'm diseased, I want to be liked by everybody, and I want um, lots of uh, tasty food, and I want to uh, be powerful and rich and famous. All of that I need to be happy, and uh, at the same time, keeping all that, you add to, to that, uh, that um, God is all-powerful, um, all-knowing. So I become little-knowing, all-wanting, God who wants, wants nothing, is, you know, apta kama, ever-fulfilled, does not want anything. I want everything and want nothing. I know everything and I don't know everything. How is this possible? You can't, you can't keep the jiva and add something to it. 
It won't work the other way around also. If you keep Ishwara, all this perfect Ishwara, and add Jiva to it, it'll just spoil things. So, keeping the original meaning and adding something new does not work here. That funny story is there is a joke of a gentleman who, I love this one, he wanted, they wanted to go to a party. So, the wife says to the husband that, uh, what's that awful smell? He said, oh, it's the socks, I haven't changed. I tell you, put on a fresh pair of socks. Uh, we are going to a party, what will people think? Then they go to the party and then the wife comes close to the husband and whispers, I told you to change your socks. And he said, but I did. The, and she says, but then why is that awful smell coming? It's, I can still smell it. And he says, oh, the old one, I put it in my pocket. <laughs> Now, to Jiva, the miserable little creature that I am, you add Ishwara. So, Ishwara is great, it's all fine, but the old one is still in the pocket. <laughs> the problems of Jiva still remain, it doesn't solve anything. So, the second method of taking an implied meaning, which is called Ajahad Lakshana, um, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Ajahad Lakshana, Ajahad Lakshana, that means without giving up, add something. That also doesn't work for us. Then the third method is there, third option of getting a desired implied meaning is jahad ajahad lakshana, like the words you can say, guess what it means. Giving up, not giving up. So you give up part of the meaning and retain part of the meaning of the terms and see if they fit. And that's what you see we did in the last uh, two, three classes. By analyzing the term you, we found you are not the body, not the mind, um, you are not the causal body, you are existence consciousness bliss. And by analyzing uh, Ishwara, we found that all of this is a projection, the real, due to Maya, the reality is Satchidananda. Now they fit. We take the implied meaning, Lakshya Tvam. What is the direct meaning? Uh, Satchidananda plus causal body plus subtle body plus physical body. Uh, plus means smaller and smaller and smaller. And what is the implied meaning? What kind of implied meaning? Keep something, take something away. What will you keep? Keep the reality. Take the appearance away. Body, mind and uh, causal body. How do you do that? I mean, it's, it's easy to say in terms of uh, interpretation. But in reality, how do you do that? Here the dream example comes in useful. In the dream, I'm seeing so many people and I'm here also, here is a body and I have a mind in this body. And then somebody comes and tells me, you know the real you is not this body, is not even the mind with which you are thinking, is not even the causal body. What is causal body? Sleep. Beyond sleep is the real you. Wake up. When you wake up, this dream body will not be there. This dream mind will not be there and the dream, the cause of the dream, sleep will not be there. You will be this w person who has woken up. Not woke person, person who has woken up. So, you, have, you are awake now. What are you not? Sleep, dream, the mind in the dream body and the, the body in the dream. You are not that. And in our dream, we were told, you know this world you are seeing? Yes, this world. That's being dreamt by this great dreamer. Mm. Who is this great dreamer? Mm, I don't think it's me because I'm this little fellow here. Well, there is a dreamer who is dreaming all of this. How do I know who that dreamer is? Well, forget this entire contents of this dream. Yeah. The, all the things in this dream, all the people in this dream, leave those out. All the minds of those people in the dream, leave that out. And the sleep which is causing this dream, leave that out. You will find the great dreamer. And when you do, you will find what you found by this process. Who am I? The, you woke up and what you find by this process, if you find the great dreamer, you and he are same. Do you see that example? How the dream example works? It's an example. It fits perfectly. That's what we are doing in the waking world. By trying to see in the waking world that 
uh, actually this physical body right now, I am not this body, why not? And all the arguments and the techniques we saw, I'm not the mind. Even the deep sleep experience of the causal body, I'm not that. I am awareness itself. And now this book is telling us that awareness through Maya, Upanishads tell us, is the cause of this physical world appearance. Give up Maya, beyond that the awareness, which is the reality of God, and the awareness which is other than the subtle, the gross, subtle and causal bodies, they are one and the same. That's the implied meaning of Tattvamasi. This is called Jahad Ajahad Lakshana. Keeping the part of the meaning, giving a part of the meaning, you come to the truth. And how can you keep and give up something? Notice, in the dream, awakening from the dream, that's exactly what you do. There is something in the dream which is real. What's the only thing in the dream which is real, in the dream? It's the dreaming mind. Which appears as the dreaming world and appears as you, the person in the dream. You give up the personality of the person in the dream, you give up the world of the dreams, you end up with, and you give up sleeping, you end up with the dreaming mind, the mind itself. Similarly, one consciousness through Maya appears as this entire world. One consciousness through Ajnana appears as an individual being. This is Jahad Ajahad Lakshana. This is the meaning of Tattva Masi. When we do that, we will get the realization, I, this very individual who has heard this truth, will get the realization, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. By this, what happens, we will see. Another name for Jahad Ajahad Lakshana is, is Bhagatyaga Lakshana. Bhagatyaga Lakshana. Bhagatyaga, giving a part of the meaning. Giving a part of the meaning. This giving a part of the meaning um, is entirely reasonable as the dream example shows. You're not actually sacrificing anything that is real. You're just giving up that part which is unreal, part of the dream. The dream example is a beautiful example. The diagram is very useful to understand all the mechanics of it, but the dream example points to the heart of the process which is going on. Now, let us go ahead. I'm going to go to verse 39, 40, 41. Pratyak bodho ya abhati. Pratyak bodho ya abhati. Sodvayananda lakshanaha. Sodvayananda lakshanaha. Advayananda rupascha. Advayananda rupascha. Pratyak bodhaika lakshanaha. Pratyak bodhaika lakshanaha. What appears to be the individual conscious self? is of the nature of bliss without a second, and one that is bliss without a second is no other than the individual conscious self. So as Jagadananji comments, thus Brahman is the self and self is Brahman. In other words, thou art that. Pratyak bodha. Pratyak, inner. Inner. Bodha, consciousness. By our analysis, I am not the body, not the mind. I found myself to be an inner consciousness. I am actually, this is an object, this is an object, this is also an object. I am the consciousness to which all this is an object. This consciousness is called Pratyak Bodha, inner consciousness. So upon analysis what you found, upon inquiry what you found, I am this inner consciousness. And then, we are now hearing, this inner consciousness is none other than the non-dual ananda, satchidananda, which appears as this universe, Brahman. And the non-dual satchidananda, which appears as this universe, is none other than that inner consciousness, you. You are none other than God. God is none other than you. What a, this is the meaning of Tattvamasi. It's not that you, you are that, we say, uh, that is how we translate it. But it means you are that and that is you. 
It also means, even more radically, you are nothing but that. And that is nothing but you. As one sadhu put it uh, remarkably, he says, uh, you are nothing but that, tattvamasi. That means you are not body, not mind, not this personality, you are that only. And that is nothing but you. Brahman is nothing but you. That means, uh, more radically, there is no Shiva, Vishnu, Devi, uh, Allah, Jesus, uh, I mean, Father in heaven, other than you. What a stunning statement to make. I am God, even then one can sort of... Uh, but there is no other God except you. You are nothing other than God, first of all. And then, you have to do that first. You have nothing other than this. And then there is no other God except you, that this real you. I heard this about one of our senior monks. He used to go to Swami Premeshanandaji uh, many years ago. Premeshanandaji was a disciple of Masharada. One day, to this young boy who was coming, suddenly Premeshanandaji was ill on his bed. He turned towards him and put his finger, like a cold uh, old man, he put his finger like this on the head, like this. You. And the boy was startled, went back like this. And Premeshanji said to him, there, there, that one which just got startled, other than that there is no rascal called God. <laughs> In Bengali, oi, oi, oi je chomke utlo, o chhara kono shala bhagavan ni. It's literally the translation of this verse. Pratyak bodho ya abhati. This which shines, which you recognize after a little bit of Vedantic inquiry, you recognize that yes, I am awareness, I am consciousness. So Advayananda Lakshana, that is the non-dual Satchidananda. And what is non-dual Satchidananda, which, which through Maya has created the entire universe, that is you. So Pratyak Bodhika Lakshana, that is nothing other than you. Tell me, so, yeah, it's me, but it's also other, all these other people. No, 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 no. Where else do you see this pratyak bodha, inner consciousness, except in yourself. Nowhere else. The moment you say, yes, yes, the God is me, and but also other people, I want to be inclusive, Vishishta Advaita will come in. <laughs> there are no all and one. It, it don't, it's not just me, it's everybody. Me and everybody, whole and part, individual and all, then Vishishta Advaita is there. This one is indivisible. The moment you say, I am this, you are not saying, I am a part of this. There is no part and whole there. There is one reality only. I am that means, all of them are this only. In that sense, it's correct. The moment you say, I am this, you don't have to further say, I have to include other people also. I don't want to leave anybody out. You haven't. What do we gain by this? Next, 40-41. All this I have said already, but it's beautifully said here. 40 and 41 will show us what we gain by this, this radical move. What move? I am none other than God. That means I am not body, not mind. God is none other than me. God is not some other deity other than you. Separate from you. When you say, there is no God but you, it might sound very uh, sacrilegious. Then the question from Advaitic perspective will be, what kind of God are you talking about? This, when you say, no, 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 there is Vishnu, there is Shiva, there is Jehovah, in that sense. Uh, what is the sense, do you mean? Is that Vishnu, Shiva, Jehovah entirely other than you? In that case, that kind of God does, is not accepted in Advaita Vedanta. Isn't it essentially you? Yes. All right, forty forty one. Itam anyonyata datmya, itam anyonyata datmya, prati patti yada bhavet, prati patti yada bhavet, abram hatvam tvamathasya, abram hatvam tvamathasya, vyavarte tadevahi. Vyavatyeta tadevahi tadarthasya ca paroksham tadarthasya ca paroksham 
यद्येव किं तृणु यद्येव किं तृणु पूर्णानंदकूपेण पूर्णानंदकूपेण प्रत्यबोधो वतिषते प्रत्यबोधो वतिषते द मिसकनसेप्शन दट द वर्ड दाउ मीन्स समथिंग अदर दैन ब्राह्मण एंड द वर्ड दैट हेज फॉर इट्स मीनिंग समथिंग मीडिएटली नोन सीजेज इमीडिएटली ऑन द कॉम्प्रीहेंशन ऑफ द म्यूचुअल आइडेंटिटी ऑफ द मीनिंग्स ऑफ दीज टू वर्ड्स डिसाइपल वॉट फॉलोज दिस द टीचर लिसन द इंडिविजुअल कॉन्शियस सेल्फ स्टैंड एज द वन ऑल पर वेडिंग ब्लिस विदाउट अ सेकेंड दिस इज द हाइस्ट नॉलेज एंड इज द गोल टू बी अचीव लुक how the diagram works beautifully here ittam anyonya tadatmya pratipatti yada bhavet when you get when you begin to see this you know with diagram and uh, and the uh, dream example anyonya tadatmya you are none other than satchidananda this one god is none other than satchidananda you and god are literally one tadatmya means literally the tasya atma you are the atma of god god is your atma atma means essence self you are nothing other than god essentially and god is nothing other than you essentially this one when this this clarity happens then what happens abrahmatvam tvam arthasya vyavarte tadeva hi immediately the idea that i tvam artha means you artha what it refers to this consciousness that this is something other than god that misconception goes away i am literally god one with god but not god in this sense only in this one as the absolute existence consciousness please and also i not in this sense this fellow as existence consciousness please that this is something other than god it goes away but notice this could work only if you have gone from the vachyartha to the lakshyartha only if you have gone from the direct meaning of i direct meaning of you what is the direct meaning of you this guy this will not work tattva masi will not work here that's why you have to do the work of not body not mind not causal body the witness of witness consciousness but you can't leave it at witness consciousness then this tattva masi has to be brought in because the witness consciousness can also be you can remain as the witness consciousness and think there are many witness consciousnesses here also god does he exist not exist he she it you can still have those doubts but tattva masi removes that forever what is the witness consciousness in each of us is one witness consciousness and that is what is called god so abrahmatvam tvamarthasya your idea that i am not god or not one with god that misconception is removed forever immediately when you realize in the play which is going on the emperor on the stage and the beggar on the stage they are one and the same how can the beggar be the emperor who is the beggar this guy who is the emperor this guy big guy there <laughs> when i when i go to our uh, one of our ashrams the monk in charge there says The, uh, the rule is always to go to the temple first and bow down to thakur he, he puts it this way have you um, have you met the uh, big guy yet so <laughs> go and first bow down to the big guy before you do anything else so abrahmatvam tvamarthasya vyavarteta tadevahi the idea that brahman god is something other than me that goes away that distinction i know i'm forever one with god what happens on the other side tadarthyam cha tadar tadarthasya cha paroksham yadeva kin tatashrinu so to tadarthyam tadarthasya cha paroksham one more thing happens tat what was tat i had read in tadarthasya cha paroksham i had read in upanishads i have read in vedanta i have read in all religions that there is that reality from which the entire universe has come but that when i read about it it seems indirect distant book knowledge belief faith thakur says god exists so i believe it but it is indirect 
that indirectness of God is immediately removed. Why? I, my own existence as awareness, that's direct for me. There's nothing more direct than that. That one is God. So the indirectness, the remoteness of God goes away forever. It's closer than the closest to me. Nearer than the nearest. My very own self. Mamatma. This was indirectly said um, by Sri Ramakrishna. You know, I, I, I once I asked Swami Nirmuktananda, wonderful Swami, who lived to be like um, more than a hundred. When I asked him this question, he was nearly a hundred years old. He was a disciple of Swami Shivananda. And um, he had served Swami Akhandananda also. So I met him in Belur Math. He was sitting on Mother's Holy Mother's Temple. I went to him and asked him this question. A uh, couple of questions I'd asked him, but one question was this, that we hear about all this tattvamasi, we study it in Vedanta, this is what's been taught, and this we keep teaching. This seems like one kind of spirituality. And then our gurus give us a mantra, ishta devata, mantra, devotion, repeat the mantra, meditate. That seems another kind of spirituality. Where is the connection between the two? One is meditative and high, devotional. Other one seems to be highly philosophical. What is the connection between the two? And he said to me, I still remember his sitting old man sitting on mother's temple. He said to me, and don't you know what Thakur has said? Jejar ishto shetar atma. Whoever is your ishta devata, that is your atma. If you know this, you know exactly how it works. If you don't know it, you have to take it on faith. That, all right. Sri so Ramakrishna has said, um, and he, he has said, Sri so Ramakrishna told this to Akhandananji, Akhandananji told it to Nirmuktanji, who told it to me, I'm telling it to you. Now. <laughs> Have no conflict between the Vedantic approach and the um, apparently dualistic bhakti approach. Ishta Devata, Ishta Mantra, meditating in the heart. See, that is a highly symbolic way of indicating to you your own inner consciousness. Even the Upanishad, when we, we sang today, Satyam Jnana Manantam Brahma, the next line there, you know what it is? Where is the Satyam Jnana Manantam Brahma? Yo Veda Nihitam Guhayam Parame Vyoman. This has to be realized, that Satyam Jnana Manantam Brahma, that one has to be realized as installed in the sacred space within the heart. We are literally talking about the same thing. Jejar Ishto Shetar Atma, whatever is your Ishta Devata, that is your Atma. Here he has put it in very philosophical terms. Tadathasya Parukshyam. The remoteness of God, Tat, that goes away when you realize this. It's just I, this consciousness shining, I, I am the consciousness which is ever shining. That consciousness associated with Maya becomes God. That consciousness associated with the individual um, uh, mind and body becomes this guy. But I am that consciousness. God is that consciousness. Then what happens? You can see, tata, king tata. The, the student says, you can imagine, the student shrugs, okay, nice. So what? What follows from all of this? What's the point of it all? Uh, take away, take home from this. It's time for take home. So, uh, what is the take home from all this? He says beautifully, Purnananda eka rupena pratyag bodha vatishtate. This inner consciousness, what happens? Listen, this teacher says, Srinu, listen. This inner consciousness, you feel it? You are that? Yes, it's always there. That remains as the unlimited non dual, you know, non dual ocean of bliss. Purnananda eka. Purnananda Ekarupena as the limitless bliss, one limitless ocean of bliss, it remains. It remains means you remain in that way. What about when I come back here, I'm this person again? You still remain as that, you know that I am this. And all of what I perceive, the world outside, they're all appearances of these waves in the ocean of bliss. Ashtavakra sings after this realization. Mai ananta maham bodhau vishwavichi svabhavata 
Udetu vastamayatu name vriddhi na vakshati. I am an infinite ocean of bliss. In me, the infinite ocean of bliss, the waves of this universe arise. Let the waves arise, let the waves subside. The ocean neither gains anything nor loses anything thereby. Let the universe arise, let the universe disappear. Let birth come, let death come. Hmm. I gain nothing by birth, I gain lose nothing by death. Let success come, I have not added the least bit to myself by that. Let failure come, I have lost nothing by that. I remain as Purnananda Ekarupena. Which one? Pratyak Bodhavatishtate. The inner consciousness you all feel right now, that remains. This is freedom. Now what is to be done? The remaining verses, let me just read out. Home, homework after this. I'll read out 42. Um, no. Let me read out. 48. No. One more, little further. 49. 49, 50, 51, I'll read, and, and 52 and 53. Let me read those out. Beautiful verses from 49 onwards. What has happened in between, I've, I've already summarized. Aham Brahmet, Aham Brahmeti Vakyartha. Aham Brahmeti Vakyartha. Bodho Yavadridhi Bhavet. Bodho Yavadridhi Bhavet. Shamadi Sahitas Tavad. Shamadi Sahitas Tavad. Abhyaset Shravanadikam. Abhyaset Shravanadikam. One should go on studying the Shrutis and thinking over their meanings as well as practicing the control of the internal organs and other virtues until the right understanding of the meaning of the sentence I am Brahman becomes quite firm. Until one can honestly say I am Brahman, the non-dual ocean of bliss. I appear in this form as this orange guy but I know clearly that I am this ocean of non-dual bliss, I am Brahman. Until that becomes very clear, at least to you internally, honestly you can claim that. Until that time, please go on cultivating the fourfold qualifications. Always discriminating between discerning eternal from non-eternal. All of this on this side of the blue, non-eternal. On that side is eternal. Discern. Then, vairagya. Whatever is on this side of the, of the blue, no connection with me. When sadhu in... Uh, um, Swargadwara. So he, he said, Nitya or Anitya me koi samman nahi hota hai Mahatma ji. Jo hai wo mana hua hai. Between the eternal and non eternal, there is no true relationship. Whatever you think there is relationship with me, with these people, this property, this um, house, and this country, all non eternal. This body, non-eternal. This mind, these thoughts, these ideas, this conviction, this Vedanta, non-eternal. You have no connection with any of these. It's all assumed, taken on, like a role you play in a drama. You really have no connection. You are Satchidananda only. Uh, that is Vairagya. For everything on this side, on the other side, Watch it like a drama, like a movie, but have dispassion in your mind about it. You should be fine with what is going on there, on this side of the blue line. And then, to help you to do all this, you need the control of the body-mind. Without that, it's difficult. Shama, quietude of the mind. Dhamma, a control over, over our body. Senses, senses of knowledge, senses of action, and these motor organs, all of that. Then, titiksha, spiritual toughness. I'll be buffeted by the waves of samsara. Don't blame samsara. I'm buffeted by the waves of karma. My own karma. So let me be tough and hold on to this truth. It will only help me. 
See, we think it's samsara which is the cause. No. Deeper analysis shows it is my karma which is the cause. Even that, no. It is Ishwara, Bhagavan, who is doing all this to me so that I become firmer and I realize Aham Brahmasmi as soon as possible. He's put me on a crash course to become enlightened. <laughs> so don't, don't be worried about this. I'm reminded of the same thing, how you can understand in deeper ways. Um, a Zen monk in a Zen monastery is telling the newcomer, you know, the one Zen monk. Um, so the newcomer sees the flag on top of the monastery saying, look, the flag is moving. And the Zen monk says, no, you should look deeper. It is the wind which is moving. Uh, then another senior monk is watching that. He says, no, you should think deeper. It is the mind which is moving. Uh, I think, oh, so deep. <laughs> then one old monk who went up in the monastery was trying to sleep. He shouts down, it is the tongues which are moving so much. <laughs> Keep quiet. <laughs> so, um, spiritual toughness, titiksha, whatever comes, I will hold on to this conviction. I will keep on practicing my spiritual disciplines. Then uparati, withdrawal from too much engagement. I know all this, but I have no time. I am too busy with the world. No. Is that different from pratyahara? Which one? Uparati. Not different. Pratyahara is part of the yogic, Patanjali yoga, Ashtanga yoga. This is in Vedanta. So uparati is a practice. Pratyahara, of course, there is a difference. Pratyahara is an actual process of not looking at the world, not hearing things outside, you know, shutting down so that I can withdraw inside. Uparati is more a philosophy of life, an attitude of life. How am I organizing my life? Mm. Not just in the hours of meditation. My whole life should become inward, in, um, withdrawn and meditative. Uparati. And then, um, samadhana, focus, focus. <coughs> not just when you're sitting in meditation, but also when, um, you know, general life it becomes focused on spirituality, not on worldliness. Samadhana, settle down on your Vedanta. And then uh, there is Shraddha. Uh, I have a deep faith in these teachings that it's true. Until I become settled in it, I will hold on to it. Give it a try. Give it a fair try. Vivekananda says, Bengali, Denakta Jivon, give one life. You have wasted so, long, so many lives in the pursuit of this, of this world. Give one life. Uh, even if it is wasted, give, give one life. And he says, then uh, I assure you it will not be wasted. I met this Swami, Biren Maharaj, very interesting old monk. He is a disciple of Swami Sharadanandaji. Old. He lived to the age of 105. The oldest monk in our order. So we are 104. Um, so today we are talking about lots of old monks. He said, that how did he become a monk? He, was read, he, was a, uh, he had just finished school, he was in college. And he read Vivekananda, he was reading Vivekananda. Vivekananda says, give one life. He got up and walked out of home and never came back again. <laughs> yeah. Give one life. And I met him when he was in his late 90s. But he was quite a character. Mm-hmm. Monk supposed to be obedient. He is just the opposite. He was well known for his disobedience. <laughs> he told me proudly, he, 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 he told me, he said, I, all my life, it's as if he's proud of this practice. If Belud Mutt told me to go east, I would go west. <laughs> it was a very fierce old man. <laughs> many, many, many old senior monks knew him very well. They had, they have any, any number of stories to tell of this crusty old Swami. But he told me, I, I still remember. He told me, on this head, the hands of six direct disciples have touched this head. They, have, they, have, they put their hands on this head. I have no fear. Amar bhai darni. I have no fear in this world. Nothing in this world scares me. Six direct disciples have put their hands on this head. So many funny stories of you. Shraddha. <laughs> um, and then Mumukshutvam. Intense desire. I must attain it in this life. Not slowly. 
in this life. I've got this knowledge, highest knowledge. There's nothing higher than this in all the philosophies, religions, scriptures of the world, teachers of the world. Nobody has said anything higher than what we saw today. We've got it. Now I must make it a living reality and I must get the benefit out of it. What has been promised, I must get the benefit. And the doors are open to me now. So this is Mumukshuttam. With these fourfold qualifications, Abhyaset Shravanadikam, continue to practice Shravana Manana Nididhyasana. Keep coming to the retreats, listen to YouTube talks, study the books at leisure, ask questions and try to stay with it and see. See, one thing is already there for all of us, Pratyak Bodha, this awareness within. How this is infinite, let that one question burn in your minds. How this, what is meaning, what is the meaning of infinite? Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma. Satyam Jnanam we already have got. Satyam means I am. Jnanam means I am aware or awareness. This we have got. But this Anantam is where we are getting stuck. We still feel it's a very limited thing and subject to all kinds of problems. It is entirely problem free, limitless, without a second. There is no second reality apart from that inner I am awareness which we have got. Let this be the research of our lives to find out how it is so. Tavad Abhyaset. How long do we have to practice? So we are all, we don't like practicing. How long? And there's somebody said, in these days when you tell people to do spiritual practice, like fasting, the first question they will ask, fasting, what can I eat? <laughs> practice Vedanta, repeat, hearing, uh, reasoning, meditating, how long? That means it's such an awful thing. <laughs> how can I get it over with? Sitavad, till that time, aham brahmeti vakyartha bodho yavad dridi bhavet, till that time, it is firm and unshakable, Aham Brahmasmi. Nothing can shake it, not the greatest disasters in the world, not the most serious illness, severe pain, physical, mental, nothing can shake you from that. It's very clear. Abhedanandaji, when he was studying this in Rishikesh under Dhanrajgiri, he said, let me try this. Is it true? Is it unshakable under the worst of conditions? So he prayed for disease. I prayed to God and yet three terrible diseases come upon him at the same time. He had a severe blood dysentery, malaria and one more thing. And it laid him low. He could not go to the classes anymore. He could not go out for begging for his food. He was in his little hut and body is just so weak he cannot get up. Running a high fever. Mind is delirious. And inside he says, I was delighted to see unbroken inside. One continuous stream of awareness and bliss in which the storms were playing on the top. Luckily, Saradhananji and another direct disciple, they came, they heard that somebody like this monk is there, they came and they immediately, they took care of him and sent him back to the monastery in Calcutta. Otherwise, that would have been the end of Avedananji. <laughs> so, but he has put it to the most severe tests. And we don't have to pray for disease, that we can say all the the little, little challenges which keep coming in our life, let's see how we react to those challenges from this perspective. You see, it'll work. Then what happens? 50. Shrutya Chadya Prasadena Shrutya Chadya Prasadena Dhrido Bodho Yada Bhavet Dhrido Bodho Yada Bhavet Nirasta Shesha Samsara Nirasta Shesha Samsara Nidana Purushastada Nidana Purushastada When this knowledge becomes firm by the grace of Shruti and the teacher, one has the cause of the whole of this transmigratory existence absolutely negated forever. By the grace of text, Vakya Vritti, and the teacher who helps to transmit that. So teacher and text are important. Yeah. It's not DIY, that D, what you call do it yourself. Yeah. Teacher and text is a big support. You need somebody who can explain it clearly and inspire you along the way and show you the way. And you need the teaching itself. It's not, I don't care about all of that. I have discovered it myself. No, no value there. When you follow that by the grace of the teacher and the text, uh, 
uh, when this knowledge becomes firm, ashesha samsara nidanam, the endless um, samsara, the cause of that is ignorance, uh, which leads us from lifetime to lifetime, that will be gone forever. Then, what will happen next? Number 51. Vishir na karya karano, Vishir na karya karano, Bhuta sukshmeir anavritaha, Bhuta sukshmeir anavritaha, Vimukta karma nigada, Vimukta karma nigada, Sadhya eva vimuchyate, Sadhya eva vimuchyate. Such a man, his gross and subtle body is dissolved, freed from the subtle elements and released from the chain of actions, gets immediately liberated. At that point, uh, what happens? Gross and subtle body is dissolved means what? Not that you, you dissolve into a puddle of uh, <laughs> uh, uh, like some sticky substance you become. No. You realize you are Satchidananda and these are all appearances. These are all appearances. These are not real. I am real. These are appearances. That is the dissolution of the gross body and the subtle body. And he says, no longer covered by the subtle and gross elements. Five elements, Akasha, Vayu, Agni and all that. You are covered by that. That now is not covered. That doesn't mean that suddenly everything disappears and you become a burst of light. But it's something close to that from your perspective. You will see that it's just, it looks like a world, but it's just endless radiance. It's just light. Light means not physical light, awareness. Every bit of it. It just looks like that. But in reality, it's endless awareness, existence awareness. Then what happens? You're free of karma. The whole idea in all Indian philosophies is that we are bound by the chains of karma. Whatever is happening to us is because of our past karma and whatever we do will keep generating new karma and this perpetuates. But this knowledge sets us free. Vivekananda again. Good, good, bad, bad, none escape the law. Whosoever wears the form, that form, wears the chain. Chain, prarabdha karma, the karma of the past, which has been activated now. But, then he says, but far beyond name and form is Atman ever free. Look at the diagram. Atman ever free. No, thou art that. Tattva masi. Thou art that, sannyasi bold. Say, om tat sat om. How do you know thou art that? Vakya vritti. Retreat. And after this, what do you say? Om Tat Sat Om. You are free. He says, Vimukta Karma Nigada. Ever uh, freed from samsara, from, from the bonds of karma. When? Sadhya Eva Vimuchyate. Immediately. It's not that you have to wait for anything. This person is called Jivan Mukta. Then 52. Prarabdha Karma Vegena. Prarabdha karma vegena Jeevan mukto yadabhavet Jeevan mukto yadabhavet Kinchit kalam anarabdha Kinchit kalam anarabdha Karma bandhasya sankshaye Karma bandhasya sankshaye Nirasta, nirasta tishayanandam Nirastati Shayanandam Vaishnavam Paramam Padam Vaishnavam Paramam Padam Punaravritti Rahitam Punaravritti Rahitam Kaivalyam Pratipadyate Kaivalyam Pratipadyate On the destruction of the bondage due to the actions that have not yet not begun to produce results, a man remains by force of those actions that have begun to produce them, liberated in life for some time, when he comes by absolute oneness, the greatest and ultimate bliss called supreme abode of Vishnu, from which there is no return. So, all our past karmas, which would have created further lifetimes, they are destroyed by enlightenment. And the karma which is now, uh, which is fueling this body, that will continue for some time until it, 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 it is exhausted. Like you switch on a fan, 
and then you switch it off, it will still rotate a few times. They talk about a cart. If you cut the axle, the wheel will rotate a couple of times before falling. A potter who is making a pot, the potter's wheel, he gets up and goes away. The wheel will rotate a couple of times before falling. Like that, this body will go on for a little while till the physical death. This is called Jivan Mukta. It lives the life of the fully enlightened. This is the goal of Vedanta. Then what happens? That body also perishes. And then what, where does this one go? Nirasta atishaya, when that perishes, atishaya ananda, nirasta atishaya ananda. The bliss which, see, which has no exceeding, the bliss that cannot be ex exceeded, Vaishnavam paramam padam, and the, the state of, the highest state of Vishnu, which is Satchidananda. Not Vishnu as in um, Vaikuntha, and the Vaishnavam paramam padam, the transcendent state of Vishnu. What is that? Satchidananda. See what he said at the beginning, Yasya prasadat ahameva Vishnu, by whose grace I have become one with Vishnu. I am Vishnu in that sense. And punaravritti rahitam, there is no, no further coming back in this form anymore, in these ways. He remains as nirguna brahman, the transcendent satchidananda. Um, this is called kaivalya mukti or videha mukti. Kaivalyam Pratipadyate attains to Kaivalya. And that also from our perspective. From the enlightened one's perspective, the moment that realization is, is attained, even when the body is there, from that person has, for that person, the staying of the body and the dropping of the body is a minor thing, is inconsequential. But from our perspective, it's a big thing. We are very glad that this person, this holy one exists among us for some time in a full, fully realized state. Through this body, we are able to access. So we call that person a Jivan Mukta. And repeat after me. Iti Paramahamsa Paribrajakam Acharya Srimat Shankaracharya Virachita Vakya Vrittihi Samapta. Samapta. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ram Krishna Rupanamastu. Now in our training center, when we would complete text like this, after a text is completed, you know, take six months, one year, we would give Jai, victory. Yeah? So you can repeat after me. Jai Shri Guru Maharaj Ji Ki Jai Jai Mahamai Ki Jai Jai Swami Ji Maharaj Ji Ki Jai Yes um, Today is the birthday of Swami Vigyananda Ji Maharaj You can see his picture there He was one of the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna so, in the, after we started our, our retreat, we had the birthday of Swami Subodhanandaji. And we are concluding on the birthday of Swami Vigyanandaji, most auspicious. Yeah. Uh, the last president of our order, Swami Atmastanandaji, was uh, a disciple of Swami Vigyanandaji. Swami Vigyanandaji was an engineer. So, he, he is the one who constructed the Belurmat, the main temple there. Uh, that song which we sang that day, Jaya Jaya Ramakrishna Bhuvana Mangala. You know what is said about Vigyanananda? Premeshanji says about whom he had seen. Vigyanananda he had seen many times. He says, Jaya Vigyanananda Prashanta Gambhira. Gambhira means very serious, very profound. Prashanta means serene. So he was this knower of Brahman. What we are talking about here? Actually, person who has fully realized this. But he had this other side to him. Um, usually this sounds like a very philosophical, serene, um, which he was, but he, would, he had any number of mystical experiences. Uh, he said that uh, because uh, I, I have hot head, you know, so I, I get all these visions. <laughs> <laughs> I heated brain, that's why I get all these visions. But he was an order of Brahman and a full-blown mystic. And uh, we have heard so many extraordinary stories about him. But he, he was also very strange. He, he, um, 
he used to wear these long overcoats, even in summer. And in those overcoats were his collection of pens. He liked pens that was there. And he liked tea. So the, his tea set was also there. Fine tea set also was in, in that in the shirt. And he would conduct tea parties in the ashram and invite the poorest, the rejects, the homeless, the rickshaw pullers, and they would gather around him and, and sit for, for you know, tea with him. Um, many ama amazing things. He was the head of the Banaras. Banaras. Not Banaras. Prayagraj, Allahabad Ashram. Allahabad Ashram. He had many visions of Sri Ramakrishna, uh, of uh, the Divine Mother in the, in the Triveni there in, in Prayagraj. Um, Extraordinary visions of the Buddha, visions of, um, of just an ocean of light everywhere, visions of Shiva in Banaras. As he said, I had a heated brain. I, I get all these visions. So I pray to Thakur Ma Swamiji, Swami Vigyanarandaji on this auspicious day to bless all of us, bless us with jnana, with knowledge, this Brahma jnana, this bodha, bless us with devotion. Bless us with selflessness. Bless us with calm and inward meditative minds. May we be a blessing to ourselves and to all around us. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.